Thanks for this great presentation, Mirko, um, and for the two really, really uh, interesting examples. I would like to take it from there and uh, broaden that from a more geographic point of view and uh, talk to you a little bit about how we can use innovative technologies such as open data or other technologies that we're talking about here to improve people's lives also in countries outside of Europe. Let me start uh, with showing you a chart. And this actually fits to what you said before about uh, how many percentage of the Europeans live in cities. Um, the chart shows different things. The, the circles are countries. The vertical axis shows how much, per, uh, how, how much percent of the people uh, in these countries live in urban parts. And the horizontal axis is about the population. And the important thing on that is also the color. The color is showing how much CO2 emissions uh, these countries have, from green being not so much to red being quite a lot. So let's see how this developed over the past 50 years. I've marked four examples here, Brazil, Indonesia, India, and China, because they seem remarkable for me. So there is a general tendency upwards towards urbanization, towards people living in cities. There is a tendency towards the right side from you, uh, which is more population. And what we see is clearly the CO2 emissions in all these countries are increasing rapidly. And I've taken those, two, uh, those four examples to show you two trends, one being Brazil and Indonesia with a really, really big shift towards people living more in, uh, in cities, and China and India with an absolute uh, drastic increase in population. So why am I showing you this? Because I think that megacities in those countries are a really, really interesting field to work in. Because in megacities, you have a huge increase in population, you have a huge increase in CO2 emissions, and people have a real difficulty in those cities to live there because of air quality and so on. Uh, and if you have been in one of these megacities recently, it probably didn't look like that, it more looked like that. And that's a very, very common, a very uh, frightening problem that we have in these cities. So one of the main factors why this happens there in these cities is the transport. Transport is actually uh, a really, really large part of uh, emitting greenhouse gas emissions and CO2 emissions. And the, the interesting fact here is that the projections of increase that, uh, of greenhouse gas emissions that are caused by transport are quite remarkable. So let's have a look on the megacities, on the transport and the CO2 emissions. Uh, this is just some, some, some chart showing how many cars or bikes will be in those cities in the next 30 year. years. This is actually showing a dramatic increase in motorized vehicles on those cities. And I found this picture because I read an article uh, just a week ago or two weeks ago where some Chinese cities had to shut down their entire traffic because the smog, the air pollution was getting so bad that the government had to shut the traffic down. And actually the, the, the pollution factor was 40 times higher than what the WHO says is a safe value. 40 times, four zero. So, I think it's quite hard to stop this, and there are lots of projects, of course, already working on that. And when you want to stop that immediately, like this teddy bear wanting to stop a train, well, it will not work. But ICT and one technology that I'm, my heart is very close to, um, open data, we think that this can be some technologies that, that can help to, to cope with that problems. Just a very short explanation because I think most of you know what open data is. I like this, this mark. I have it on my table. It reminds me every day on what open data is. It means put data on the web in an open li license, make it machine readable, don't use preparatory formats, and then all the more techy stuff that I don't want to go into detail now. So where can open data help to tackle these issues that I mentioned before? I think especially in two things in these megacities. One being transport planning and the other one being passenger information because both is really, really necessary to move people from their own personalized uh, uh, or their, their private vehicles, their cars, their motorbikes and so on to use public transport. You have to have a good system. You have to have a well-planned system and you have to inform them how they can get from A to B. Well, in Europe, we have that. I've taken Vilnius as an example here. I was easily able to find a bus that brings me from A to B. I find the timetables. 
Brilliant, yeah, I can find that. In developing countries, this looks quite different. <laughs> this is a picture of Kampala, uh, and this is the main bus station. And without local knowledge, without speaking the language there, you have no chance ever to find your bus. No way. Yeah? So what can open data do with that? Well, there are several projects in developing countries that were quite successful in using, for example, students having uh, small GPS handhelds, just traveling with those buses, getting the data, putting it up in the web, releasing it as open data, and other web developers started to map it out, to draw the rules, to create websites with the two frequencies and so on. This is something that's really helpful. There is a second thing that can be really helpful if the transport organizations have the data, but most of the times it looks like this. Yeah? You, have, you get data in non-digitalized formats, and this is a challenge. We know that. This is a real challenge for us, but it can be solved, and we can work on that, I think. So I want to show you some examples where this actually worked and uh, where this actually had some impact. This is an example of a map uh, that came out of a project that was recently done in Ivory Coast. It was a data for development project where a big mobile phone provider released anonymized data of mobile phones, movement data, and IBM did some big data analysis of that and was able to redraw some bus rules and they saved in average 10% 10 per 10 of travel time for the citizens. It's a huge increase. It's a huge increase in having time available for other things and not spending it on public transport. There are other good apps, and I've, I want to show you some from the European Union. This is a, a, an application from France where uh, citizens are actually in, uh, very much involved in, in, uh, in, in those apps and in providing good feedback by having an app that shows how busy is the next train that's coming, will it be very crowded, will you find a space there, or can you stay 10 other minutes in the cafe and eat your croissant and get your coffee. Uh, and people on the train uh, give this information. And this is actually quite successful. And then, of course, there is this really, really, really good example from Transport of London, Transport for London. They have released a massive amount of data, and you can go down with uh, data sets down to the, uh, to the, the color of uh, a, tra a traffic sign from trains. So you have all the data available there. And that is a really, really good uh, example because there was recently a study released that was uh, done by the British government to see uh, what the impact of that is, what the economic impact of that is. And the study quotes that by releasing this data, London uh, generated um, um, saves f uh, between 15 and 57 million pounds a year on economic value because people spend the time working, shopping, whatever, and not on the trains. So for me, this is a really, really good uh, field to work in. I really like it. I think there is a high potential of having a big impact with relatively low investment. Open data is a field that can help to tackle these problems. And it can help to tackle these problems also in the developing and emerging markets world. And it's our chance to see that in these cities, it doesn't look like, like this anymore, but it looks again like this. And my organization, the Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Partnership, is a non-profit organization working on renewables and efficiency in developing countries and emerging markets. And we're just setting up a project. We're developing a project where we want to roll out this idea of using open data uh, to increase sustainable transport in megacities. And if you have questions, if you want to talk to me about that, I'm very happy to answer that. Get in touch with me. Thanks, Florian. Okay, Clara, over to you.